We're going to finish up Mark chapter 7 this morning. We're going to be reading Mark chapter 7 beginning with verse 24. And as I looked at this passage, you'll see a phrase in here at the end, and I just want you to sort of watch for it. But we know that God is someone that does things well. We don't expect half measures or disappointing answers or lack of follow through. Those are things that we um, have happen to us when we might ask a friend to help with something and they might forget or we might ask, expect that someone's going to um, provide a service and sometimes it's not really what we thought we were going to get. But God is a God who does all things well and as we look to Jesus as the example, you know, sometimes we think, well, I'm better than that, or we look at someone and think, I wish I could be as good or do what they do for the Lord, but really no other person is our standard, our example. It's Jesus. And as we look to this passage initially, you may be a little surprised and think, really? That's what I'm supposed to be doing? And um, this passage is one of those that people have um, struggled a bit with some of the language in here and some of the things that happen. But I just want to point out that God is someone that we know intimately. If you're a believer, he's living right inside you. His presence is with you. And you can trust him more than you can trust yourself to be um, doing the right thing and saying the right thing. So when you get in a situation and think, that doesn't seem like God, it's good to sort of step back and think, you know, I know who God is and it doesn't seem like what I would have expected today to have happened, but I can trust him. And in the end, I know that I will see he does all things well. Mark 7, verse 24. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know. Yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephathra that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. So if you recall the passage that we did last week, Jesus was talking about some kind of culture shattering things. He declared that all foods were clean. He was pushing um, the Israelites they, against their culture, things that they had accepted and liked it that way. They didn't want to have them declare all foods clean. They didn't want to hear that he wasn't going to keep them their little separate culture all isolated from everyone else and just just us and no more they weren't really welcoming the message jesus had brought last week 
And I'm sure that even his close disciples were thinking, what? This isn't going to sell, Jesus. Nobody's going to want to hear this. Nobody's going to want to hear your, your um, message if it has to do with this stuff. And people were uncomfortable. They were not pleased with what Jesus was telling them. And they were having a hard time. Remember, he said to his disciples, you don't even understand this. And he had to explain it to them again. And it's hard to understand things that go against what we hold dear right in our hearts and think is true, true, true. And we've been standing for this for a very long time. And so it's sort of a pivotal point in Jesus' ministry when after this, very few um, people are pleased with him. He's really right now headed to the cross because the Jewish leadership is not going to buy this. They're not going to like it. And so they head off into an area that really would be um, close to like southwest Lebanon today. It's a Gentile-ish area. There are some Jews living there. But it's almost like we'd say, I'm going to get away and go up north. I need a break. <laughs> you know, I'm getting away from all these crowds, and I'm going to go stay with a friend. It doesn't say it's a friend, but he was somewhere that he thought was going to be safe, and he's there, and his presence, it says, could not be hidden. Now, this is just an aside, not what we're talking about today, but if Jesus is in your house, if he's lifted up as Lord in your house, if his presence is there, you can't hide him either. <laughs> you know? People are going to find out. And that's, that's a, actually a great thing. We don't, we're not trying to hide him. But on this day, he really was thinking he needed some time away. And his disciples did too. But he could not be hidden. Somehow this woman gets in. We don't know. Maybe she was a friend of the family. Maybe she was a servant that worked there. We don't know. It doesn't give us her role. But she'd heard about Jesus and the power that he had to heal people and to cast out demons. And she pushes through toward him. Matthew actually says he tried to ignore her. You know, have you ever had someone kind of think, oh, no, I don't really want to get into that today. He actually says he tried to... Um, I don't know if it uses the word ignore, but not acknowledge that she was asking for this. Mark doesn't say that, but what he does say um, for us, for me, when I read it, is troubling. You think, really, Jesus, that sounds kind of prejudiced and mean, and you're just saying no to this woman and calling her a dog? You know, it just doesn't sound very good. And that's why I started this out to say we're not part of the culture then. There are many things that you and I say today that make perfect sense to us. There are figures of speech. There are things that we say that if you really analyze them, you'd think, is that right? Is that what you really said? Well, Jesus, in this situation, remember, has just told his disciples that um, Things are going to change. My kingdom is here. We're not going to follow all the old restrictions and rules. We're going to open this thing up. Foods are going to be clean. We're not going to try to follow all that legalistic stuff anymore. And as his disciples are there seeing him, we know Peter was there. He's the one who told Mark to write this down. We know, you know there were people there, witnesses of this story. And as he was there, he's speaking not just to the woman. He sees her faith. Her faith is perfect. She is absolute sure that if Jesus will just say the word, that her daughter will be well. She, she's not wondering or doubting whether he can do it. And she's begging. She's willing to... Um, in front of this Jewish man, in front of this group of Jewish people that she knows don't like her. And it wasn't just the Jews who didn't like her people. Her people didn't like them a bit either. They didn't get along. They didn't have friendly parties together. They didn't do stuff. They were not cultures that blended well. So as she does this, she's desperate. She's willing to approach this Jewish rabbi and beg for her daughter's deliverance. Jesus, on the other hand, does all things well and sees a chance to kind of throw out this little saying 
that was commonly said. She's not shocked at it, and really neither were his disciples shocked at it previously, but now they've had this teaching that's working on their hearts that's saying, you know, this about clean and unclean, and you can't touch a person that's not a Jew, and you have all this special washing to do if you do, and you're contaminated. Jesus has started teaching us that that's not really what makes us good, and what's inside our hearts already is really what the problem is. They sort of have that all. They don't have it quite clear yet. They probably couldn't have given you just the clearest um, little teaching on it. But Jesus throws out a quip that's theirs, and now, just like us, they're sort of taken aback. Like, he's telling us how things have been, and where our hearts are changing, and we realize that's not really good enough for God, is it? And the woman doesn't take offense. She comes right back at it and says, even the dogs get the crumbs, Lord. She's, she's not upset at Jesus for saying this. She's not taking it personally. She's part of the culture and gets it that Jewish people call her people dogs. And we have groups in our society today that, you know, kind of cover up their prejudice by having little sayings that they say and everyone's kind of agreed to it. But as her faith is shown in front of everyone, Jesus says, good answer. Uh, he's impressed with her faith and he honors her, her request and heals her daughter. Now it's important to see that he's not limited. He doesn't have to go to her home and touch her daughter and let her be healed. We have some um, instances in scripture where he does directly touch people, where he does anoint people, where he does things. But he's not limited by that. And we might think, well, why does sometimes he do it one way and sometimes he does it another way? And it's for you. It's for the person. He's doing it in the way that the person can connect with, that the person's faith can be increased. And whenever we think that God is so small, like we are small, and has to have some little detail his way, we're off track. It's us who need the details. It's us who want it a certain way. And we see that leading into the very next miracle here. He's, he leaves that area and goes to an area we would call Jordan today. And he's asked to heal this man. He's specifically asked, will you lay your hand on him? They're begging him, lay your hand on this guy and see what you can do. And the man's condition is that he's deaf and that he has a speech impediment. Now that's not uncommon if you can't hear, you know, from birth, if you can't hear um, sounds well, it's hard for your voice to learn to articulate sounds. You know, babies, when they first are starting to talk, they're kind of blah, blah, blah. You know, none of their words are enunciated very well. So it's not that his throat and mouth, per se, don't work although it does give you that perception when you have someone who stutters or just cannot seem to get it out, we often say their tongue is tied, like it's just not, not working smoothly and easily and well. So he has these conditions, and, and this approach that Jesus takes to it, first of all, is not what they asked for. They asked, lay your hand on him and, and heal him, please, and he, instead takes the man away privately. So this miracle is not done in front of a crowd. He takes the man away privately. And remember what I just said, he, apparently the man needed that. Now we do have people in our society today who are kind of made fun of, we, we know better than to make fun of them, but we sure are glad we're not them. And, and I think that's the position this man was in. Probably kids made fun of him when he was young and people still, and, and he needed the privacy if he was gonna really connect with who Jesus was. And Jesus' full answer is not really about being an itinerant healing evangelist. That's not what he was there for. He was there to show people, I'm the Messiah. I'm the Savior, new day. Your sins can be forgiven if you believe in me. 
And that was always his agenda. It was never, um, let's help see how many sick people we can fix. He, he does have healing in his power. He's the creator, but often we see our little physical need as the hugest thing, and Jesus sees our heart needing to be fixed as the hugest thing. So he takes this man away privately, and he does some odd things. He takes his fingers and he sticks them into his ears. But maybe not so odd if you were somebody who really could not speak and were used to some sort of sign language, some way of saying, okay, I'm going to fix your ears. That's what I'm focusing on right now. And in that sense, increased the man's faith. Now, we're kind of just disgusted, at least I am, about the idea of, you know, spitting and touching someone's tongue. That's really gross. But in, in this day, um, whether it was true or not, people believed that saliva was a healing thing. And that if you got saliva from somebody really healthy and you were really sick, it was almost like medicine to you. Again, I, we believe it was some kind of sign language to the man to say, and now I'm going to heal your speech too. I don't know if at that point his hearing was already coming back. It doesn't give us that level of detail. But again, he says to the man a word, and it doesn't seem like he'd say a word to him if his hearing wasn't coming back. He says a word in Aramaic that means be opened. Now, for the man, it was the sense of be opened, like have your ears be opened and have your, your mouth um, released from this um, stuttering or speech impediment. But whether or not we are sitting here today, like Thelma has requested prayer for her ear, you know, that has fluid in it. So, and there may be other people. I don't know everything about all of us, but there may be a need for us to have our hearing improved. But there may also be a need for us to be opened in other ways. And we've heard Jesus teaching about how dangerous it is to have this hard, closed heart that cannot accept the words that he's giving. Maybe today it's your heart that needs to be opened. And even if you have asked Jesus to be your savior, we still have things that kind of build up and we have um, blind spots in our understanding of things in our um, sense of what's right, our sense of what we are doing. And, and today, um, closed hearts are something that Jesus can open. We might say, just like last week I said, he's not talking about the heart, the muscle that beats your and makes your blood circulate. He's talking about the sense of your mind, your understanding. And to have a closed mind about something and be unwilling to let God really speak to you and show you new things, new information, new way of understanding that leaves you unable really to communicate with God. There are people, Jean mentioned earlier, about people who are just bound by destructive habits, by things that are um, maybe about drugs, but it's maybe, you know, like Dave and I are asking God's help with not eating so much. You know, we're, we know it's really important, but even though it's really important and you would think that, that that would just be it, you know, it's not that easy. It's easy to start out with that kind of a path. It's not easy to follow through. So there are things um, that are destructive to us that we may be praying and asking God to fix, but maybe we're not open to the way he wants to do that. You know, it's, we've got set ideas of how that ought to go. Maybe we're thinking God should just make it be so. And he's thinking, no, you need to learn some discipline to make that so. Um, and I'm not making light of that. I'm just saying that this teaching, when we look first at him saying to the woman, um, I need to take care of the nation of Israel. That's who I'm sent to first. And it was. He was sent as the answer to that promise that had started with Eve in the garden. 
when when she was given some hope you know you've really messed up here Eve but one day um, your seed is going to come and make a difference he's saying he's answering the promise to Abraham who was promised by God personally that his family would be great and that God would bless them he's answering David who was promised that someone in his family would reign forever that's who he's coming to and it was important that he follow through with what God had promised to that nation but his plan was never that small his plan was that as they reached the nation of Israel they would share the gospel with other nations and they weren't willing to do that they became very internally focused and so God once again had to help them do that and that's what this this passage is about today it's a rough path it's not going to be something that's easy it's not only just about the crucifixion but even after Jesus dies and is risen and comes back and and talks to his disciples and and is taken up into glory even then Peter who Mark wrote this book about Peter remember has that dream where a sheet is let down and there are all kinds of unclean animals it isn't an easy thing to take in there have been many things through the church where we have not done it God's way we have shown prejudice we have shown heartlessness we have pretended as though whatever we thought is the way God thought but we really hadn't asked him we were just doing it our way and that's still something that's important to us today that we open our hearts that when we're praying when we're asking God about something that we don't already have the answer figured out and we're praying that God make our answer be right because it's probably not <laughs> you know, even even if we have it based on what we've learned there's probably always something God can open you up to a little bit more and help you be more like Jesus this morning we see a healing has taken place the man with the deafness and the inability to speak was able to speak and hear people and communicate and that was an amazing miracle to people that caused the people when he came back out from his private um, encounter with Jesus to just say wow this guy Jesus he does all things well and he does today as well sometimes when we think our prayers weren't answered as we asked it's because we don't see our situation as God sees it we see it just from our narrow little it's like we're peeking through a little pinhole and we really don't see um, the big picture the way God does and that's what we call faith faith is believing what we cannot see yet faith is trusting that God is good and that when we think otherwise we're the ones who are incorrect we're going to sing that song this morning healer and if you do need healing healing in your body healing in your spirit healing for someone else i just encourage you to trust god for that this morning